Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life for so many years. But now it's my turn. I wanna share a little bit about my story, my journey through Hawaii and Japan, the people, the places, and the things that made me who I am today. My name is Taizo Braden. This is my story. This is Taizo Time. Today we're cooking tamago yaki. It's a great dish, easy dish, but more importantly, delicious dish that you can cook. First off, start with eggs. That's the easiest thing right here. So we got about six eggs or so. Easiest way, make sure you crack it. Open that bad boy up. Now we also wanna go ahead and add into this a little bit of milk and a little bit of sugar. I like to use whole milk. In Japan, where I grew up, they have whole milk there. And whole milk makes a really big difference when it comes to the consistency of the egg. And more importantly, when you whip it up, it makes those egg bubbles really stay in there and kind of leads to the fluffiness of that. <laughs> and then go ahead and mix this up. Now some people, they like to add a little bit more salt, shoyu, mirin, it's really up to you. And you go ahead and get a sif. Pour the egg yolk mixture that you've just made right on through. Not only does it aerate it a little bit more, but it's almost like making a smooth coating that it just goes right on through. And when the eggs come out on the other side, very, very uniform, very nice, almost like a pancake batter. My parents left me for three months in Osaka, Japan with just my grandmother. She didn't speak any English, I didn't speak any Japanese, but every morning we came down to breakfast and she would point to tamago and I'd say egg, and that's how I learned how to speak Japanese because if she made something great, which she usually did, I wanna know what it was, and if she made something bad and I didn't wanna have it again, I would learn how to say it. And connecting with her over food and language, I honestly can't, there's certain dishes that I can't eat today without thinking of that journey with my grandmother because of that. These are your typical tamagoyaki pants. As you can see, they're really unique. Kind of a, well, rectangular shape, a little bit of an edge right there. I'll show you in a little bit, but that's really important for the technique on when we're flipping it to make those layers that we're talking about. Okay, now the trick is too, we don't wanna pour the whole thing in the beginning, just a little bit. Right as soon as you pour it in, you'll start to see it cook along the edges there. That's important, because right in the middle, as you can see, it's still a little bit liquidy. So I went ahead and turned up the flame a little bit there, make sure it was cooking a little bit more. Once it starts to cook, you start to pull it back and roll it over. We still have about three more to go. Now, one of the key components of tamagoyaki is the layer effect. And in fact, some people like to put some ham, cheese. So it's like a Japanese omelet, but when you layer it, it keeps the air inside, it really makes it fluffy and unique. Remember, tamagoyaki is a great dish that many Japanese families prepare in the morning and then put in their bentos or eat it for lunch later in the day. So this is good stuff. Eggs, nori, and a little bit of soy sauce or shoyu, very easy to come by when you're a college student. You throw that on top of rice, that's perfect for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And it's really, really easy to eat, but also it's very nutritious as well, which is important. Oh, oishiso, okay. And again, this is another reason why the, the tamagoyaki dish is so easy. Check this out, I'm gonna put it right. Wow, that actually turned out a lot better than I thought it would. No, I'm joking. I'm grandmother. I know you're very, very proud of me right now. Okay. My name is Taizo Braden. When I was born in Osaka, Japan, my birth certificate says Taizo Braden, and I was actually born with blue eyes. But I was named after my uncle Taizo. So my grandmother very quickly couldn't handle two Taizos in the house. She was yelling at all of us, but there was too many Taizos running around. So very quickly, she told my mom I had to have another name. So my mom, she loved John Wayne, the movie actor, so she went back, changed my birth certificate, and changed it to John Taizo Braden. So everybody calls me Taizo, except for my grandmother in Japan and the IRS. This is very great. Uh, mackerel saba in already pre-made, ready-to-eat cans. The great thing is, you just take this, you can heat this up in the microwave, but I like to use a pan because you can kind of get a little bit extra crispiness on the outside. It's always so delicious. So you go ahead. Put that right there. Oh, she's so good. So we have our tamagoyaki, we have our saba miso kind of fish dish right there. And then of course we also have our rice. So a very easy, very simple, but very fun and delicious dish to go ahead and make. And let me go, ooh, see this is the payoff right here. You, you see the steam, you see it. I'm not just cooking for myself, I gotta eat with some people, that's right. We're gonna be sitting down with some friends, uh, well, friends of this show that help bring your stories together. And if we're gonna be telling your stories, we gotta get some food inside of us. We got tamagoyaki, a little bit of sabo, some miso, some skiamono, but most importantly, check out the natto. This is really good stuff. But don't worry, I'll eat it. <laughs> I remember 
They used to cook this all the time in the dorm rooms our freshman year at the That's University right. of Washington. Yes, go, go Huskies. Go Huskies. Right. But again, Rich, it's all about sharing food. And when it was like raining in Seattle, comfort food like this really makes a difference, doesn't it? Taizo, I just appreciate you and I appreciate the meal. Um, eat the dakimasu. Eat the dakimasu. Game over.